John and Teller Software has been providing wargaming technology to military clients and the public for over 25 years. The concept of wargaming has been with us for much longer, and modern computer wargaming loosely falls into two categories. The first person shooter with great graphics and requiring quick reflexes, and the more classic counter strategy game which Panzer Campaign falls into, although recent iterations have tried to blend the two. The marketplace has many examples of this style with the Gary Grigsby series and also games like The Operational Art of War. John Tiller Software provides a 100% operational game of Panzer Campaigns on its website. The details are on the screen and the game is 100% free and licensed. A feature of JTS Panzer Campaign is the thoroughness of the documentation provided. This includes beginning and advanced tutorials, as well as a thorough documentation on the history of the actual campaign. This video will feature the beginning tutorial detailed in the started.pdf document. The download and installation is fairly straightforward. So if you've been able to follow page one and two of the started.pdf, your screen should look similar to this one. Page three of the instruction details the victory conditions. Use the mouse wheel to enlarge the map. The minefields may look a little different on your version, but they relay the same information. So if we left mouse button the enemy unit, you'll see in the top left corner is the unit information box, followed by the terrain information box. Status bar is in the bottom left, which has the uh, Russian turn, gives all that information, and plus the time indicator of the time of day, the black being night, and etc. Divisional markings are pretty important, I think, to keep these on so you know all the units in the particular division. Movement is quite straightforward in most of these strategy games, but the most important thing is to make sure in this game is not only clicking on the hex with the unit, but making sure you double click or click the unit information box so you get the red outline to say it's been activated. So we activate the infantry unit and the first method is just to right mouse button in another hex and away it goes. As I say, the main thing to remember is make sure that the unit has been activated before doing the right mouse button. Another method, or the second method, is to activate the unit, then left mouse button and drag to the new location. Now, by selecting the guard's artillery unit and trying to use one of those two methods, you'll find that it won't work. So, with towed units, um, artillery, uh, you need to put the unit in transport mode. So the first read button is transport mode, or you can use the T shortcut after you've activated the unit. Use the T shortcut or the menu button. One of the useful features is the reachable hexes button, which shows you just where uh, the selected unit can move to. This is all detailed on page 7. So now we'll move to the important business of firing, which has indirect fire and direct fire on page 8. The best way to use the artillery in indirect fire is via the artillery dialogue. 
you see you select it in the art in the artillery dialogue and then right mouse button over the target hex Uh, movement points are expended for each uh, round of firing and most artillery units can fire more than once in this particular turn. Now uh, for your infantry, most of the units in this game can only attack from one hex away or exactly adjacent. So all you do is move your friendly unit into the enemy unit's uh, location either by a right mouse button or left move and drag. Air support is similar to the artillery dialogue except that you must LMB or left mouse button the target before activating the air dialogue. The second mode of uh, ground attacks are called assaults. These are very powerful and it's well worth understanding these. Once again you activate the assaulting units and you move to the target hex by right mouse buttoning them across. The second part of doing the assault is to select the Resolve Assault button and the assault will then occur. You can do this any time you like, you can leave it to the end of the turn or do it as a assault by assault during your turn. Other interesting features are fixed units on page 12. Often this denotes units which are come in as reserves or later in the battle or haven't been released by a higher headquarters as yet. And this is available via the fixed units button. So these are the units release who have been released by higher headquarters, they go from fixed to released. An important type of unit in, in any game of this type is engineers, which have the sideways E. Very useful for clearing mines, building bridges, destroying bridges. Um, you should not use these as infantry uh, unless you combine them with other infantry doing assaults. It's a bit of a waste to use them as a purely infantry unit. So we move along to page 13 and it talks about uh, moving a bunch of our units into the minefield area. So we go through and do that. In this case I highlight the fixed units so I can see which units I have the opportunity to order into the minefields. Interestingly in some scenarios you have Russian penal battalions which <laughs> usually get pushed up the front for this very task. Once again, activate the unit, so the unit information box goes from the outline of yellow to the outline of red, 
then right mouse button or just left click and drag. So once you've finished all your turns, uh, you just click the end or next turn button and now the other side will um, have their turn. Now whether it's the AI in this instance or whether you're playing by email or whether you're playing a hot seat game or over a network, uh, this is when you change sides. So at the moment we're just covering the basics of Panzer Campaigns, but I think you can see it's very easy at this, this stage, and it won't take you very long before you'll be able to move units around, fire them, get in combat, and all those, those issues you can get in these games very quickly. Of course the, the real challenge and maybe fun of these games is the detail and the nuance and the subtlety of uh, using different tactics. Of note, uh, perhaps in late 2020, uh, Shelt 44 Panzer Campaign will be released, which just has a new graphical engine, uh, which looks uh, very clean and modern. And that will, that game engine will eventually be updated through all the other Panzer campaigns at no cost to um, you if you already own the game. Also, uh, at this stage I've got the AI in normal speed, but uh, say if you want to go quicker through this process, you can actually accelerate the AI to do this phase uh, in a much quicker manner. Right. So... Our new turn commences with the command report, which gives us all types of information of what happened uh, to some of our units during the enemy turn. So we're on page 15 at the moment. You may notice the status bar has been updated, uh, the time of day has been updated. Reachable hexes is quite useful. Uh, that tells you how far we can move down the road. 
Now remember that artillery units, rocket units, etc. have to move in transport mode. Now moving in transport mode means they're more vulnerable to attack. Plus, you may want to fire in your next turn. So, you will need to take your uh, artillery unit out of transport mode and back to deployed mode in this turn. And that's where this reachable hexes and save movement cost button comes into play. So it allows you to uh, move, but keep some movement points aside so you can actually change back to deployed mode. As you can see there, there's less distance we can move, but by doing this, we can then change out of transport mode. And notice how the transport mode has a grey bar on the bottom. And now we're back in deployed mode. So that's it for my short introduction to John Tiller Software Panzer Campaigns. Uh, the beginning mechanics are quite easy, but the enjoyment of the game is in the detail, uh, but they are quite easy to get into. So next time you're into a uh, strategy game, have a think about Panzer Campaigns.